Um, Mr. President, I'm moving these disallowances because these regulations essentially establish the biodiversity offsetting scheme. And to be really straightforward and say it like it is, biodiversity offsetting is nothing short of a scam. The new biodiversity laws and regulations that have been enacted take the already very low standards of biobanking right through the floor. Climate change, land clearing, and habitat fragmentation and degradation is driving an ever-increasing number of plants and animals onto the threatened species list, a list which now tops more than 1,000 species in New South Wales. So what is this government's response? Let's make it easier to clear land, and let's water down the already very weak rules of offsetting to a point where offsets don't even have to actually exist. We are really looking, we are really through the looking glass with this one, Mr. President. Cash for trees, the ability of a consent, cons consent authority to reduce the offset, no matter the environmental impact. And if that's too hard, they allow you to not even worry about offsets or undertake so-called biodiversity actions, which won't protect or save a single tree. This government is definitely living in a parallel universe and want a regime that Sir Joby L. K. Peterson would be proud of. Mr. Deputy President, we need to massively restrict the biodiversity offsetting scheme to only the most necessary cases, and even then only in ways that expand biodiversity, not the very basic no net loss standard that we have been left with now. And we can start doing that by disallowing this regulation today and sending it back to the drawing board. We need an end to the get out of jail free cards for big miners and big developers. Let's not lay out the red carpet for them to irreversibly destroy our environment. I said earlier that biodiversity offsets are a scam, Mr. Deputy President, but they, because they presuppose that we can continue with business as usual, clearing whatever we want, whenever we want, or when nature becomes inconvenient, and then tricking people into thinking that we're actually protecting it somewhere else as compensation. Biodiversity offsets allow for the destruction of biodiversity in one area in exchange for promises to protect biodiversity values in another, even if that area was never under threat. We will have a net loss of threatened species habitat or endangered ecological communities, all with a big tick of approval from this government now. It is farcical to assume that you can offset the destruction of mature habitat. Offset sites are really the same in ecological value, and it is not possible to assure that biodiversity in two locations is the same or equivalent in quality. Biodiversity offsets are often not even properly established before the environment is ruined. Far from being a win for the environment, the end result is a net loss of endangered species and the destruction of critical habitat. And who monitors effectiveness? When an offset inevitably fails or fails to meet the outcomes prescribed, no one is held accountable and no one is made responsible for it. I have repeatedly asked the Environment Minister what is the science behind offsets and how effectiveness is measured, and never once have I been given an answer. The Laird State Forest in the Liverpool Plains is home to more than 400 native species, including critically endangered ecological communities. The Bogabri and Malls Creek coal mines have been approved to clear 4,000 hectares, or around half of the forest, including species like white box gum. Species at risk include koalas, the masked owl, and southeastern long-eared bat. The offsets for these two projects are completely inadequate, and a large portion are located outside the bioregion that they are meant to offset. Mining companies are getting a free ride courtesy of the New South Wales Government. The New South Wales Government's offset policy abandons the principles of ecologically sustainable development while increasing flexibility for developers and mining companies. And it treats genetic diversity as a commodity to be traded rather than ensuring ecosystem protection as an overarching principle. Last year, the Nature Conservation Council released a report, Paradise Lost, the Weakening and Widening of New South Wales Biodiversity Offsetting Schemes, 2005 to 2016. And it makes for very sorry reading, Mr. Deputy President, and is a litany of the failures of biobanking and offsets under governments of both stripes. It concludes that biodiversity offsetting schemes in New South Wales have failed to deliver the promised outcomes, and none of the eight case studies were found to have delivered good outcomes. All of these projects, of course, predate the current proposal. 
But if the Liberals and Nationals are looking for good news, then they will be disappointed with, with the report because one of the findings of the report was that the draft biodiversity assessment metho methodology contains fewer best practice principles and standards than any previous scheme and will likely deliver worse environmental outcomes. For the first time, proponents such as big developers and mining companies and landowners can now satisfy offsetting obligations in their consent conditions by paying into a new biodiversity conservation fund, which places the onus of locating equivalent offsets on the proposed biodiversity conservation trust, a public organization. And even if the trust is unable to locate an equivalent offset, clearing can take place regardless, again resulting in biodiversity loss. In short, no offset, no worries mate, just sign the check. In an era of climate change, this is dangerous and reckless, and worst of all, it's willful. Climate change has already affected biodiversity and will continue to do so um, as the threats increase in future. The impacts will be complex and numerous as species and ecosystems respond to rising temperatures, changes to rainfall and seasonality and extreme weather events. Habitat loss and fragmentation will make it even harder for native animals and plants to migrate and survive. We urgently need to permanently protect endangered communities and threatened species. Just recently, we have seen the future of what awaits New South Wales under this land management package. Loose land clearing regulations in Queensland has seen the destruction of 10 square kilometers of trees every day, or around 395,000 hectares of land in just 2015-2016. This rate is up by a third on the previous year. <coughs> Almost half the area cleared was in river catchments near the Great Barrier Reef. The evidence from Queensland shows that weakening land clearing laws unleashes an epidemic of land clearing and greenhouse gases. With the green light to open slather clearing that these regulations allow, Premier Berejiklian is sitting on a ticking climate time bomb. And time is running out. We cannot afford to keep losing koalas, potaroos, wombats, threatened species and native vegetation simply to suit the conveniences of big money, greed and making a quick buck. Mr. Deputy President, I also want to discuss biodiversity actions. These actions were established by the bill and are completely removed from even the concept of biodiversity offsets. Under these actions, nothing is offset at all. The ancillary rules published under clause 6.5 of the Biodiversity Conservation Regulation 2017 discuss prescribed actions. These include a targeted survey, research to understand critical threats requiring management or determining the distribution of the species. And I'm sure that these are only the tip of the iceberg. How utterly offensive that the developer or mining company can say, I want to destroy threatened species habitat and then do a survey to determine how many there are left? This makes no sense at all. And I know what the answer to that will be anyway. A bloody load less than if you hadn't cleared them in the first place. The submission's report to these regulations makes interesting reading as well. This is the report made public on 30th August this year, five days after the regulations were enacted. That's what a classic big box consultation exercise looks like. But don't worry, the website assures us that the report does not provide the New South Wales government's response to the issues raised in submissions. That's because the New South Wales government won't ever actually respond to the hundreds of problems identified in their regulations and raised in the submissions. Why, you ask? Because they can't. They know what these bad laws will do and what devastating impact they will have. They know their position is completely indefensible. So they will just ignore the voices of science, of evidence and of morality and listen to the ones which fulfill their agenda. They aren't listening to YAS Council, who said that the new offset system design leaves each LGA with the potential to have biodiversity values significantly reduced through cumulative effects of offset purchases outside the LGA, um, outside the LGA for clearing activities within its boundaries. They aren't listening to the Malls Creek branch of Country Women's Association, who asked that the cash for trees scheme be removed. They aren't listening to their own New South Wales scientific committee, who said it is entirely unclear what mechanisms might be used to apply offsets to threatened ecological communities. But Mr. Deputy President, they are listening to big coal, they are listening to big mining, they are listening to big property developers. 
These reforms, let's remember, were modelled on the big giveaway to mining companies through the New South Wales Biodiversity Offset Policy for major projects. It was this that established one of the most offensive provisions, that mining companies could claim biodiversity credits for their next mine or extension merely by rehabilitating their existing mine site, something that they were required to do anyway. And what was the evidence of the government's own environment experts? Office of the Environment and Heritage argued in one note, secured by the Nature Conservation Council under freedom of information laws, that there is no certainty that functioning ecosystems can be restored to their original value through rehabilitation after a mine has closed. They went even further to state that the Office of Environment and Heritage um, questions whether restoration of biodiversity on a degraded site is even possible. But as is always the case with this state, big money trumps science, and it trumps sense and we all suffer. Finally, Mr. Deputy President, not only is New South Wales lowering the bar for biodiversity and offsetting in the state, but it seems they are setting off a chain reaction in the federal sphere with their mates in the federal government. Just last month, Federal Environment Minister Josh Frydenberg issue, issued a notice of intention to develop a draft bilateral agreement with New South Wales under Section 45 of the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 apparently around assessing the impacts of control actions. And I am deeply concerned that this means that the EPBC offset policy, which is stronger than the state one, will be sidestepped and undermined. And I do ask the government to confirm that this bilateral agreement, what this bilateral agreement is and how it relates to biodiversity offsetting. This year, the budget for land acquisition for national parks and thus permanent protection stands at less than $8 million. That's about a third of what the government is giving to local land services to administer the so-called reform. The government doesn't care about the future. It doesn't care about the environment. It doesn't care about koalas or our native birds or marsupials. And it sure as hell doesn't care about the communities it is hanging out to dry. And how did we get to this point, Mr. Deputy President? How did we end up with this epic decline in environmental protections? Why are the government and their mates in the shooters, fishers, and farmers in the Christian Democrat Party pushing through regulations and legislation that we know will lead to biodiversity destruction and devastation? Well, the same reason that anything happens in this state. Help out their mates. It's always the big money. It's always this game of mates. For members who are not sure how this game of mates is played, I can recommend a recently published book by Cameron Murphy and Paul Freitas entitled Game of Mates, How Favors Lead the Nation. And the book opens with these lines. This is the story of how Australia became one of the most unequal societies in the Western world. While merely a generation ago, it was one of the most equal. It is a story of how groups of mates have come to dominate our corporate and political sectors and manage to rob us, the Australian majority, of over half our wealth. Mr. Deputy President, my dear friend and colleague, the late Dr. John Kay, often talked about the New South Wales disease of politics. He once said that decisions in the state are being made for the mates of political parties, not for the community and the environment. It is about a culture of influence peddling that has infected New South Wales politics and has robbed it of public confidence. The government, this government, Mr. Deputy President, deserves to be chucked out and with them their anti-environment, psychophantic mates, the Christian Democrats and the Shooters Party, who have so enthusiastically supported these destructive laws and regulations. I commend the disallowance to the House. The Mr. Minister.